you know what's crazy about this marketplace? Last Friday was the worst day in the stock market. In the history of the Dow Jones, over an 1,100 point drop in the stock market last Friday. The following weekend, uh, the next weekend, that Monday, after the weekend, the best day in the stock market. By the way, time out, peep the shoes, Red Friday. Big shout out to all my military folks out there, brothers and sisters deployed overseas. We wear red on Fridays to honor you. Thank you for fighting and defending our country and our freedom. Back to this stock market. The best day in the stock market was Monday. The worst day in the stock market was last Friday. So what am I talking about? What I'm talking about is this is the opportunity for many people to make a ton of money in the marketplace. Fear sharpens listening. Well, most people weren't paying attention to finances. Well, most people were paying attention to the retirement accounts. Well, most people were paying attention to their, their, their career, their job, the security of their cash flow. This is the opportunity where most people that were paying attention to it are actually starting to pay attention. So here, here's the thing. Our company was birthed in the midst of a recession. Our company was birthed in October 2009. Today, 10 years later, over 13,000 of us are across the country. You know why? Because we realized the best time to start a business, ironically, is in the middle during fear. Maybe call it, call the fact that uh, the founder of our company, Patrick David, coming from the army, says, you know what? When there's noise, we run towards the noise. Most people are running away. We run towards the noise. Myself, former United States Marine, I run towards the noise. I run towards opportunity. So when we're thinking about what's going in the marketplace today, hmm, think to yourself, what am I not doing about money when there's people obviously making money in the marketplace and I'm not, what am I not doing with my money? What am I not doing with my education, my awareness, my knowledge, my follow through when it comes to this area of finance? Many of you have a great job. Many of you have a great business. But in the area of finance, we struggle. A lot of us struggle. And by the way, I've came from all sides of the wealth triangle. I came from poor, I came from making it, and came to now making a cash flow, cash flow millions per year. But I've been on all sides of money. And the times that I felt that I missed out was the times when people were operating in fear and I jumped on the bandwagon too as well. Versus saying, you know what? Dot com bubble, dot com bubble, 01, 2000, 2001, dot com bubble, burst, burst recession, early 2000s. I didn't know what was going on. I just thought everything in the marketplace was gonna go great. And then I got ready. I said, you know what? I missed out on a ton of opportunity. And not only did I miss out on a ton of opportunity, I wasn't making enough money to stack cash to take advantage of opportunity. So even if an opportunity presented itself, I wasn't there to take advantage of it. So what, what did I do in the mid 2000s? I said, everybody making money with real estate. I said, everybody making money with mortgages. I said, everybody making money with real estate investing. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, everybody's making a quick buck right now. And my mentors and the people I was associating with, they were long-term uh, type, type folks. They're long-term money type folks, old money type folks. And I just looked at it as a flash in a pan. I was, like, I was thinking about getting involved in, uh, in bandwagon, jumping into real estate, but I didn't. I did a couple properties, got I got in, got out, but didn't really get involved in a lot of major real estate investing. And next thing you know, in 08, 09, what hit? The mortgage meltdown, real estate bubble burst. It just didn't make sense for all these, all these mortgages and all these mortgage companies being able to give people these type of loans. And obviously through that process, inflating real estate values when it really wasn't really wasn't what wasn't that value because here, here's the old saying that you can't lose money in real estate you can't lose money in real estate that's what a lot of people were saying before 2008 2009 happened and then we realized boom you can lose money inside of real estate so we picked a very old boring dinosaur industry to make a lot of money in which what is that the insurance industry more people weren't paying attention to retirement accounts more people weren't paying attention to retirement planning more people weren't paying attention to life insurance because of old stereotypes such as only rich people buy that type of stuff or, or, or I, I have to wait till i'm later in life to afford insurance or it's when i'm about to die that's when i get insured or only people that die you know and, and they don't even get benefit from the people that are left behind from their insurance or from a retirement account standpoint well i can wait later in life i, I want to live my life now right coming from the neighborhood me vida loca right i want to live my life now live my crazy life now but guess what happens? Your crazy life gets stands, extends, extends, and next thing you know, you have a family, you have a wife, you have kids, you have expenses. Life kind of hits you in the mouth. You wake up in your late 20s, 30s, like, oh my gosh, I really need to start making some money. So those things started happening in, in, in my life in 08 and 09. I needed to get up to speed because the, 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 free, the free and clear type of days with no responsibilities of not having kids and a wife and, and, and a family to raise was no longer in my current future. That was a far distant past. And, and when I'm looking at what the coronavirus is doing to a lot of people, I see a lot of fear. I see companies out there um, uh, making money right now. Costco making a ton of money. Walgreens making a ton of money. People are losing money. Airline industry, the hotels. Uh, I think the Arnold Classic was canceled in Ohio. This is something that my kids were competing at 
with, with jujitsu and all the my health and nutrition buddies, uh, my bodybuilder buddies, that's what they go to every year, the Arnold Fit Classic in Columbus, Ohio. They canceled it because of fear of the coronavirus. I'm thinking about all the money that people are lost, not even to sell the product, not be able to sell the nutrition, not be able to sell their, 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 their fitness plans or meal plans, uh, exp expand their brand, compete in the competition. You know, all these people lost money. The, 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 the exhibitors lost money, the hotels lost money, the, the airlines lost money, travel lost money, a lot of people lost money. Why? Because of fear. But with that being said, there's also some opportunities with inside it. When there's fear, there's also opportunity. Finding the opportunities with inside of fear, that's the silver lining. That's the difference between people becoming multimillionaires today and just having the same old saying oh, five, four, six, uh, you know, four, five, six years from now. Because right now, here's, a, here's the opportunity. The seeds of the future next wave of multimillionaires is happening in moments like this. I said this on TV in 08, 09 on WGN TV, my first ever media appearance. I said, the next generation, the new millionaires of tomorrow are being born. Matter of fact, let's watch a clip of that real quick. This interest rate cut and with the, you know, with this market going down and down every day, you think it's got to bottom out at some point. Sure. What do you, is it going to get worse before it gets better? Is it about the reaching the end here? Absolutely. And that you mentioned, Tom, this is a great wake up call. This is, and hopefully we're dreaming with our eyes open here. So do you think it's, what do you, what do you think the future is? Is it going to get worse before it gets better with this interest rates? Does that help? That's the beauty about being at the bottom. You know, it's one direction is going. But is that what this up. is? Is this the bottom? I mean, we really hope it is, and we hope what the government's doing to bail it out, bails it out, and brings things up. But we're talking about a real crisis in confidence here, and that's what has to turn around, right? That's right. The only thing we can control right now is our thoughts and our behaviors and our attitude. What's going on? We can't really control what's going on on, on the economy. You know, money is all about emotion and 20% head knowledge. Right now, you're buying real estate cheap. You're buying stock cheap. Hey, this is the opportunity. Millionaires right now are being made. The, the last thing I'll say is this: there's states they're losing people. You know, they're, they're losing people. Uh, uh, I think California is losing people. They lost $8 billion of revenue, of tax revenue, because people are moving out of California. New York is losing a lot of people. I think it's safe to say that Florida is a sixth borough of, of New York. Uh, another, you know, $8 million, $9 million lost from New York for people relocating to different states. Uh, Illinois, I think we're the number one state in the entire United States that's lost the most people over this decade. Our own company relocated from uh, Woodland Hills, California to Dallas, Texas, because the high income taxes, not only by, by the government at the time, but also by the state of California were imposed. And, and our CEO just wrote a huge litany of reasons why Bye Bye California. Matter of fact, let's put a clip of that right here. But it's the reason why people are, are, are losing losing opportunity in certain states, why states are losing opportunity, because the high income tax states, and I think our treasury secretary, Mnuchin says, you know what, hey state, uh, states, you might want to consider lowering down your state income taxes. So anyway, make a long story short, I, I said it to say this. There's so many people today that's losing out. People are not able to deduct their itemized, they call it the SALT tax exemption, right? Uh, sale, uh, uh, sales tax, property taxes, local taxes, whatnot, and SALT that inside the SALT deduction, that there's a certain cap that you're able to deduct those type of taxes depending on your state. But if you're a business owner, guess what you can reallocate those deductions through? Your business. But if you don't have a business, you can't write off any of those type of deductions. There's no way to reallocate deduct the deductions you missed out on. So as you're watching this, as you're watching our YouTube channel here, The Seven Figure Squad, you're watching our content. Listen, if you want to be tomorrow's multimillionaire, if you want to at least get to six-figure income, you got to start thinking differently than most people. You gotta start acting differently than most people. You gotta act, see, seek information proactively. And here's the beautiful thing about YouTube. Here's the thing about this world. There's access to information in anything. The biggest way to control people is to limit their access to information. Most people were, were controlled. You know why? Because back in the day, they were unable to read books. Today, you can read books. Today, you can have access to information. Now, these days, because of the internet and social media, you can co you connect with so many people that are like-minded thinkers. You know, get away from the people that the first thing you bring up an opportunity to them is always the negative side of things. Get away from those type of folks. Those folks will never, and listen, probably some that's probably hard for you to do that. Because some of these folks you grew up with, some of the folks are your family members, some of the folks you went to college with, you were in the military with. But anytime you're around somebody that's always shooting something down, shooting something down, shooting that without looking into the matter, that's a friend or family member that's very exhausting to be around, especially if you're looking for the opportunity amongst fear during opportunities like this. So with that being said, I hope you're looking for information to get you to the next level of your life, at least financially. That's real, yo. I ain't exaggerating at all, man. The more money you make, the more problems you get. I gotta disagree. More money, better problems. If you wanna have better problems, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you wanna have better problems with your finances and want more options, Drop your, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. 
If you haven't done so already, make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you check us out behind the scenes. We're going to share with you our life. So therefore, you can figure out whether or not we're full of it. That being said, thanks for tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart, and your money smart today.